I think one of the things that's maybe happening is that uh, the weather has been so bad in so many parts of the country uh, of the world that are food producing regions that the harvests are liable to be pretty poor this year. And I'm not sure that that's something that the world as it's presently organized can withstand without uh, a lot of friction. Mm. You know, I, 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 that, that was one of the things that really kicked off the, the revolutions in North Africa several years ago. And, uh, you know, I, I'm surprised. I'm, I'm actually surprised that a place like Egypt has been limping along as it has since then. But this could really put them over the edge again. And, uh, you know, could also provoke yet another wave of people leaving these parts of the world and trying desperately to get into Europe and destabilizing that further. Um, as far as the central banks go, I don't think they can afford to stop, really, because, you know, the basic problem, as you know, is that there's way too much debt in the world that will never be paid back. And if your currencies are denominated really as as uh, notes against debt and the debt isn't being paid, then uh, ipso facto, the currencies are worth less. So, uh, you know, that that poses a pretty significant problem for the central banks and suggests to me that they simply can't really stop, although they're, you know, making a show of pretending right now. I think at the first uh, real sign of a some kind of a market breakdown, uh, they're going to turn around and, you know, stop raising interest rates and go right back to uh, creating, you know, creating money QT style, uh, Q, uh, QE style again. Our currency may appear to be appreciating Right now, you know, on some strange, uh, mystical, uh, uh, algorithmic basis, you know, th that that really can't be understood. But we we also know what the fragilities and the weaknesses are in the U.S. system and in the American dollar and you know our currency, and that that uh, there's an excellent chance that it's going to resume going in the other direction. So we'll see about that. Well, that's you know, this is exactly what the dynamic actually is, that when everything is is false, then anything goes and nothing matters. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we're seeing. I mean, there's a direct relationship between uh, the, the absence of uh, truthfulness and fact in in finance and the fact that uh, any kind of racket can be run and any kind of scam can be run. So that's that's where we're at right now. And, you know, I think it reflects the general desperation of a culture that has run itself up a, uh, an economic and financial cul-de-sac and really can't see a way out. And probably there is no way out unless you have a, you know, uh, uh, sorry to inject this cliche, but some kind of a collapse of, of current arrangements and a. Uh, you know, a, a really emergent reorganization that makes things function according to, you know, reality that comports with reality. And w right now we have a system that does not comport with reality. And and everything about our culture is becoming increasingly unreal, unbelievable, false, uh, you know, a hall of mirrors where nobody really can be sure what reality is. I have a feeling that a lot of it has to do with just the, you know, the digital realm that we've put ourselves in because the the basic thing about the digital technology is that it can manipulate reality and once you start manipulating reality you know an awful lot of things become unreal it's as simple well, as that yeah. you know the liquidity will only be there um until people lose faith that the debts can be paid back and when when they realize that the debts aren't going to be paid back, whether it's, you know, all of the uh, college loans or the collateralized instruments that have been created behind the college loans or the car loans or those or those uh, derivatives that are created off of those, um, you know, when all of those obligations, those mutual obligations are revealed to be uh, false then I think that the the primary dealer banks who act as the agents for the central banks simply won't have the liquidity to play the games that they're playing now. And, you know, th that will be the moment of inflection. But, you know, I think that we have to go through some kind of a convulsion. And 
uh, I, I happen to believe that we're going to the convulsion is going to come from a completely other direction and it will blindside us because we're, we're completely deluded about the economy and especially the financial and banking sector of the economy. And, uh, you know, I believed for quite a while that that was the most fragile system that we depend on for everyday life. Uh, if it doesn't work and none of the other things in our, in our economy work and you know, the, the financial system is perhaps more deranged than even the sort of general mental condition of the citizens. So I have a feeling that, uh, you know, we're going to get blindsided and hit upside the head by the, uh, by trouble in the financial sector. 